Hey guys, welcome to my lecture on system properties from the impulse response. I already had a lecture on system properties. If you haven't watched it yet, please do it before continuing this tutorial. In this video, I want to use HD to find system properties. Just as a reminder, the response to the delta function is called impulse response or HT. As I already explained, for an LTI system, the whole system can be identified by HT. In fact, HT is the richest response that we can get from an LTI system. This means we should be able to find system properties using HT. Let's start from memoryless systems. As I already explained in the first tutorial on system properties, a system is called memoryless if the output at any arbitrary time, let's say T0, depends only on the input at that time, not the past, not the future. In fact, the system does not have memory to store past or future moments. Now, let's define memoryless systems using HT. A system is memoryless if HT is non-zero only at the origin. Again, HT is non-zero only at the origin. In fact, HT can be expressed as a delta function multiplied by a k, which is a constant amplitude. I want to emphasize these two definitions are equivalent and they are the same. To explain that, let me show you a simple example which violates the second definition. Let's say HT is delta T minus 1. This HT clearly does not satisfy the second definition. HT is the impulse response to an LTI system. So YT is XT convolved by HT. Let's replace HT by this delta function. We get XT convolved by delta T minus 1. From the convolution examples lecture, we know by convolving xt with a shifted delta function, we get shifted xt. So based on this, yt is equal to xt minus 1. This is the output and this is the input. Now, just as an example, let's replace t by 0. So y at 0 is equal to x at minus 1. This means the output at 0 depends on the input at minus 1, which is the past. So based on the first definition, the system is not memoryless. The conclusion is the first and second definitions are equivalent. So to have a memoryless system, HT must be a delta function at the origin. Example, HT is given and the question is whether this system is memoryless. Unit step is 0 for t less than 0 and it's 1 after that. Exponential function multiplied by the unit step is like this. As you can see, HT is not zero for all these times, and therefore it's not memoryless. Next example, HT is 3 delta T. This function is only non-zero at the origin and the amplitude is 3. So this system is memoryless. The next system property that I want to cover is causality. As you may remember, a system is called causal if the output at any arbitrary time depends on the input at that time or the past, not the future. Now let's define a causal system using impulse response. A system is causal if HT is 0 for T less than 0. So HT must be 0 for T less than 0 and it can be whatever after that. Again, these definitions are equivalent. To clarify that, I'm going to show you an example which violates the second definition. HT is equal to delta T plus 2. This function is non-zero at minus 2 and clearly does not satisfy the second definition. HT is an impulse response for an LTI system, so YT is equal to XT convolved by HT. Let's replace HT by the delta function. Again, there is a convolution with delta function, so we just need to shift XT by 2 units. This is our input and this is the output. As an example, let's replace t by 0. y at 0 is equal to x at 2. So the output at 0 depends on the input at 2, which is the future. Therefore, based on the first definition, the system is not causal. My point is the first and second definitions are equivalent. To recap, for a causal system, ht must be 0 for t less than 0. Example, HT is UT plus 1, which is unit step shifted by 1 unit to the left. Let me plot it. As you can see, 
HT is not zero for T less than zero and therefore it's not causal. Second example, HT is E minus T UT. Unit step is zero for T less than zero and one after that. One multiplied by E minus T, here's what we get. HT is zero for T less than zero and therefore the system is causal. Next property is stability. From my previous lecture on system properties, we know a system is stable if for any bounded input, we get a bounded output. We call this BIBO stability, bounded input, bounded output. Now let's define a stable system using impulse response. A system is called stable if HT is absolutely integrable. Here is the mathematical definition. The integral of absolute value of HT must be a finite number. This is absolute value. Again, these definitions are equivalent. So the system is stable if HT is absolutely integrable. First example. HT is given E minus T UT. The question is if this system is stable. To answer that, we need to see if this integral is a finite number or not. UT is 0 for T less than 0 and 1 after that. So the integral is zero in this interval and we can change the lower bound by zero. During this interval, ut is one, so I'm not gonna write it. Now let's look at this function. e minus t is always above the x-axis, which means the function is always positive. The thing is, absolute value has no impact on a positive number. For instance, the absolute value of two is two. So we can ignore the absolute value. From calculus, we know the integral of e to the power of ct, where c is a constant number, is 1 divided by c, e to the power of ct. To find a definite integral, we need to replace t by the upper and lower bounds and subtract them. Here c is minus 1. This is a and this is b. Let's use this and find the integral. Here's what we get. This is 0 and this is 1. Minus minus 1 is 1, which is a finite number, so this system is stable. Second example, ht is given et multiplied by ut. The question is if this system is stable. To answer that, we need to see if this integral is a finite number or not. Unit step is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 after that. So similar to the previous example, we can rewrite the integral like this. Now look at this function. As you can see, it's always above the x-axis and therefore the value is always positive. So we can ignore absolute value. Based on the remark I just said, this integral is e to the power of plus infinity minus e to the power of zero. This is one and this is equal to infinity. So we get infinity and therefore the system is not a stable. Next example, ht is 3 delta t. Let's see if this integral is absolutely integrable. This function is only non-zero at the origin and the amplitude is 3, which is a positive number so we can ignore absolute value. Based on the sifting property from my lecture on elementary signals, this integral is 3 which is a finite number, so the system is stable. One more example, ht is given and we want to see if the system is stable. As you know, the absolute value of t is exactly equal to t when t is a positive number and minus t when t is a negative number. For example, the absolute value of 3 is 3 as it's a positive number. Absolute value of minus 3 is 3. The number is negative, so we need to multiply it by another negative sign to make it positive. By using this definition, I'm gonna break ht into two terms like this. When t is positive, we can ignore absolute value. But this is valid just for t greater than 0. So we need to multiply it by ut to make sure we get 0 for t less than 0. When t is negative, the absolute value of t is equal to minus t and the exponential term becomes like this. But this is valid just for t less than 0, so we need to multiply it by u minus t to make sure we got 0 for t greater than 0. Let me write it one more time. We want to see if ht is absolutely integrable or not. If we plot this function, 
we get this and if we plot this function we get this now if you add them up here is what we get as you can see the summation is above the x-axis and always positive therefore we can ignore the absolute value let's break this big integral into two integrals like this unit step is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 after that so the first integral can be written like this u minus t is 0 for t greater than 0 and 1 before that. So the second integral can be written like this. As I already mentioned, this definite integral is equal to this. And this integral is equal to this. Let's simplify it. This is equal to 1, 1, 0, 0. So we get 1 plus 1 which is a finite number. Therefore the system is stable. The last topic that I want to cover is invertible systems. From my previous lecture on system properties, we know a system is invertible if the input signals can be generated from the output signals, or we can say every element of the output is corresponding to just one element of the input. In fact, the system is invertible if it's one to one. Now let's look at the new definition using HT. Let's say we have this LTI system. This system is invertible if we can find another system to recover the input from the output. Look, we have xt here and here. Let's call the second system hinft. Inv stands for inverse. From the first system, we get output yt equal to input xt convolved by ht. From the second system, we get xt equal to yt convolved by h inverse t. Let me replace xt here. We get this convolved by ht. Now, look at this equation carefully. Let me write it again. As I mentioned several times, convolving a signal by a shifted delta function just shifts the signal. This means if we convolve xt by a delta function, when there is no shifting, we get xt back. Now look at this one. This equation is true if this is equal to delta function. In this case, yt convolved by delta t results in yt. So here's the conclusion. A system is invertible if you can find an impulse response h inverse t that satisfies this equation. Example, ht is given and the question is what is the impulse response of the inverse system? h inverse t convolved by r h t must produce delta function. Based on this property, we can conclude that h inverse t is equal to delta t minus 1. Clearly, if we convolve this function by delta t plus 1, we get delta t. Done. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.